السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم الأمين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا شفيع المذنبين سب سے اولا والا ہمارا نبی سب سے اولا والا ہمارا نبی سب سے بالا والا ہمارا نبی سب سے بالا والا کملی والا ہمارا نبی غیب دا کملی والا ہمارا نبی سب سے اولا والا ہمارا نبی سب سے اولا والا ہمارا نبی سب سے بالا والا ہمارا نبی سب سے بالا والا لائٹ مند ڈاکیسٹ آف ڈاکنس آنبی Light even for the guiding light says on a bee Knower of the secret realm that is on a bee Knower of the secret realm that is on a bee Best and highest of all 
زان بی بیسٹن ہائیسٹ وہ کریشن زان بی سمپلی بیٹھ زان نی از اے زان بی سمپلی بیٹھ زان نی از اے زان بی سب سے اولا و اولا ہمارا نبی سب سے بالا و والا ہمارا نبی اللہ اللہ وہ امی و استاد کل مچ گیا جس کی بے ست پہ مکہ میں غل رہبر انس و جام انتہائی سبل رہبر انس و جام انتہائی سبل خلق سے اولیاء اولیاء سے رسل خلق سے اولیاء اولیاء سے رسل اور رسولوں سے آلہ ہمارا نبی اور رسولوں سے آلہ ہمارا نبی The unlettered prophet and teacher of teachers Upon whose call O Mecca rises and gathers Guide for all men and jinn, haven for the seekers. Guide for all men and jinn, haven for true seekers. First the people, then the pious, then messengers. First the people, then the pious, then messengers, and highest of all messengers is on a bee, and highest of all messengers is on a bee. سب سے اولا و اولا ہمارا نبی سب سے بالا و والا پیش داور جو ہے آسیوں کا وکیل جس کے ہاتھوں سے منظور ہوگی اپیل جس کا مکڑا ہے خود مغفرت کی دلیل جس کا مکڑا ہے خود مغفرت کی دلیل جس کی دو بود ہے سل سبیل جس کی دو بود ہیں کوسر و سل سبیل ہے وہ رحمت کا دریا ہمارا نبی ہے وہ رحمت کا دریا ہمارا نبی سب سے اولا و اولا ہمارا نبی He is counsel in court for those caught in the vice The pleas of sinners will be heard on his advice To win favor and pardon, his face will suffice 
to win favor and pardon. His face will suffice only two drops make the rivers of paradise. Only two drops make the rivers of paradise. That shoreless ocean of mercy is on a bee. That shoreless ocean of mercy is on a bee. Sab se aula wala hamara nabi. Sab se bala wala troubled times and the last verse of this kalam it gives us hope and so Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala alayhi, he says ghamzadon ko raza mujda dije ke hai that the people who are sad who are sorrowful give them this glad tiding that be kason ka sahara hamara na that the ones who have no one else our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is their support and so the poet who adds to this he says, Ab na dil pe koi baat li je ke hai Jaame ko sar koi dam me pi je ke hai E naseer ab zara gham na ki je ke hai ऐनसीर अब जरा गम न कीजे के हैं गम जदों को रज़ा मुज़दीजे के हैं गम जदों को रज़ा मुज़दीजे के हैं बेकसों का सहारा हमारा नबी बेकसों का सहारा हमारा Take heart in knowing that there is someone indeed from the fountain of gold, drink up all you need. Let your heart, O Nasir, from all sorrow be freed. Let your heart, O Nasir, from all sorrow be freed. Give the glad tidings, Raza, to those most in need. Give the glad tidings, Raza, to those most in need. That someone for those with no one is on a bee. That someone for those with no one is on a bee. Sab se aula wala hamara na bee. Sab se bala wala. Hamara Nabi Sab se bala o wala Hamara Nabi Most Honorable Sadat-i Kiram, Ulamai Kiram My dear brothers in Islam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has granted us this opportunity to come together and spend a few moments of our very short lives in this world in His remembrance. And these are the moments which, despite seemingly short, will be eternal in the hereafter. These are the moments that will really count from our lives. And so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us sincere during these moments that matter and allow us to spend them 
with a good and true intention only for his sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this gathering from us and make it a source of learning and guidance for the dunya and a source of salvation in the hereafter. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The ayah I had the privilege of reciting before you is the last ayah of Surah Ali Imran. Ayah number 200 of Surah Ali Imran. The surah finishes at this ayah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, O you who believe, isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. There are three commands here. One is to be steadfast, to be strong and patient. And then the second one is, Sabiru. They both stem from the same root, sabr. And so the Mufassireen, they have mentioned that the additional meaning in this repetition and the shape of the word, because it, although they come from the same root, they carry different meanings. So the first word means be steadfast. The second one means be more steadfast i.e. more steadfast than your opponents. Or it can carry another meaning, which is to encourage one another to be steadfast. So be steadfast, be more steadfast than the opponents, and encourage one another to be steadfast. Warabitu and stand guard. Ribat means to guard the boundaries. Border patrol. That's what Rabitu means. So one apparent meaning is the straightforward meaning, which is that the Muslims are told to guard the borders of their nation, their land, to be on guard at the borders. Another meaning is not talking about the physical kingdom, but the spiritual kingdom and the iman of a person, that he must guard his iman at the very fringes from the slightest attack from the shaitan and from the nafs. And so, these three commands we are given. Be patient, be steadfast, be more steadfast, and stand guard at the borders. Wattaqullah, and be mindful of Allah. Have taqwa of Allah, be fearful of His wrath. Know that He is well aware, wherever you are. La'allakum tuflihun, so that you may become successful. You may attain true success. My dear brothers, we live in difficult times and especially, as you know, the current situation around the world. And no, mat no matter whether you are a believer and others also are sad about the current situation in the world. But the believers especially, our hearts are in pain at the moment. I would like to share with you from the teachings of Sayyidina Ghawsi Azam since we are here to commemorate the legacy, the life and the work of Sayyidina Ghawsi Azam I'd like to share with you a few words from his teachings which I hope will be of some relevance to us in our current situation and perhaps shine a light moving forward on what we as a community and as individuals can and should be doing right now. Sayyidina Ghawsi Azam radiallahu ta'ala amongst his many teachings, in one of his lectures which he delivered on a Friday morning in his college, and this is like almost a thousand years ago now, that's remarkable and amazing, that someone who lived almost a thousand years ago, we are now talking about the words that he uttered in that age, such is the sincerity in those words that they live on even today. In his lecture, he quotes a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He says that the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allaha la habibahu. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish his beloveds, his beloved servants, he does not punish them. وَلَكِنْ قَدْ يَبْتَلِيهِ بِشَيْءٍ But sometimes he tests them with something. And then he goes on and he explains what this hadith means. He says that الْمُؤْمِنُ تَثْبُتُ عِنْدَهُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مَا يَبْتَلِيهِ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا لِمَصْلِحَةٍ تَعْقُبُ ذَلِكَ إِمَّا دُنْيَا أَوْ آخِرَةٍ he says that a believer, he knows with certainty in his heart that when a difficulty, difficulty comes upon him, when he is tried by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put him through that difficulty or that test except that there is some good in that either for his dunya or for his akhirah. The, I mean, the, the shan and the state of a believer is that he knows this. And this is why you see those amazing people digging their children out of the rubble and what's on their lips? Hasbunallahu wa name al wakil. Because they know that in this tribulation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed something of good for their dunya or for their akhirah. And he continues, Sayyidina Ghasi Azam radiallahu ta'ala, he says that when a person realizes and truly believes in his heart, this fact, that when a difficulty comes upon him, then he doesn't fret and he doesn't, you know, cry and make a scene. Instead, فَهُوَ بِالْبَلَائِ Then he is content with that trial. وَصَابِرٌ عَلَيْهِ And he is steadfast and patient upon that difficulty. غَيْرُ مُتَّهِمٍ رَبَّهُ And this is important. For all of us to learn from. And we can learn this from those people of Gaza right now as well. He says, Ghosi Azam says that when this person, he is in a difficulty, he holds his tongue from complaining about his Rabb. He does not accuse his Rabb, why is Allah doing this to me? It's a very important lesson for us. And then he says, غَيْرُ مُتَّهِمٍ رَبَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ أَشْغَلَهُ رَبُّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَنِ الْبَلَاءِ He knows that by putting him through this difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved him from a greater difficulty. <coughs> and then, at this point, Sayyidina Ghasi Azam radiallahu ta'ala, he addresses the people and he says that, you people, you talk, and you talk about the matters, these matters, of the religion and regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You speak about matters, but your speech is only from your lips. It doesn't come from the heart. So you shouldn't talk about these things. Because you have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dunya is your qibla, and yet you have the audacity to think that you are qualified to speak about these things. And he says that you have turned away from Allah, you've tained, turned away from the book of Allah, you've turned away from the teachings of his messengers, and you've turned away from the teachings of those people who inherited the knowledge of the prophets. And so he says that you people, your state is that you quarrel with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the qadr. You don't understand that what Allah has destined for you is good for you. Instead, you complain and you moan and you quarrel with Allah about your destiny. And he says that what you should do is this. He says that, Ya qawm, O people, Tabi'u hatta tutaba'u. You should follow until you are followed. In other words, if you follow the directions and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will make you leaders in the world and you will be followed then. There are many other beautiful things that Sayyidina Ghawsi Azam radiallahu ta'ala he mentions in this lecture, particularly about destiny and sometimes the difficulties of destiny. 
And he says that you need to understand that honor and dishonor and ease, difficulty, the sweetness of life and its bitterness, it is all by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why would you turn to someone else in those situations? Surely it makes sense that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of all of these things and everything else, that you should turn to Him and seek help from Him. This is why those people say, Hasbun Allah, Allah is enough for us. Wa ni'mal wakil, and He is the best of helpers. They understand this. And so, through the teachings of Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu ta'ala, this is one of the great lessons we learn. Amongst the other sayings of Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu ta'ala, one thing I found very beautiful, and again, very appropriate for this age and our time. وَكَانَ يَقُولْ Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu ta'ala, he used to say, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْعَزِيمَ وَالْإِعْرَادِ عَنِ الرُّخْسَةِ he says that it is compulsory for you to always take the better path and to stay away from the less of the two which are better. Let me explain what he means by this. In the Sharia, we usually find in most matters there are two paths open before us. One is known as the path of Azima. Usually it's the more difficult one but the one that fetches the greater reward and the one that takes you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the path of rukhsa, which is given because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. And He knows that we have weaknesses and we have lapses. So He gives us an easier path as well. That path is called rukhsa. For example, when we pray salah, after we prayed our fard for Zuhr, for example. After that, we pray Nawafil. Now, you will probably be aware that Qiyam, standing, is one of the pillars of Salah. If you didn't stand in Fard Salah, and you could, your Nawaz would be invalid. Because it's a pillar of Salah, it's a necessity in Salah, to stand and read Nawaz, if you're able to. If you're not able to because you're ill, that's a separate thing. What I'm saying is that if somebody is able to stand, he's physically well and fit, and he doesn't stand for his farz namaz, his namaz won't be done. But yet, for nawafil, qiyam is not a rukun. You can, even if you're fit and healthy, you can sit and read nafal as well. But the difference is that you will fetch twice the reward if you stand up and read them, and the reward will only be onefold if you're sitting and reading it. So, standing for nafil is azima. Sitting for nafil is rukhsa. So, this is the, what Ghawse Azam is teaching his students and his followers. He's saying to them, Alaykum bil azima. Azima is necessary for you. Wal i'radi an rukhsa. And staying away from rukhsa is necessary for you. Why? He says, Man lazim al rukhsa wa tarak al azima. He says that the one who makes a habit of leaving Azima and is always taking the shortcuts, it is feared for him that he will lose his Iman in the end. You know, here is someone who understands how the nafs and the shaitan operates. There's a story, amazing story that once Sayyidina Hose Azam radiallahu ta'ala he was sitting and perhaps he was preparing for salah and he heard a voice and the voice said, Abdul Qadir, I am your Lord speaking. You have pleased me with your worship. So from this day forth, you have no need to pray. Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu ta'ala, when he hears this voice, he says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This can only be the voice of the shaitan. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam prayed his whole life. And you were telling me that I don't need to pray to Allah anymore. So the shaitan, he says, Abdul Qadir, your knowledge saved you today. Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu he says, no, it wasn't my knowledge that saved me. It was the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that saved me. 
So he understands how the shaitan operates. He knew that this second comment, that was another arrow from the shaitan. Because had Ghawse Azam said, yes, it was my knowledge, that would have been the end of it. He would have been finished. But he understood that it is only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that saves us and guides us. And you're never too knowledgeable. You're never too, you know, pious. That doesn't happen. And so Sayyidina Ghawse Azam he's telling his followers, his students, that you must always take the better of the two paths. Because if you make a habit of taking the shortcuts, soon you will take so many shortcuts that the shaitan will get to the real things that matter. Going back to the ayah, this is what rabitu means, guarding the boundaries. Take care of your nawafil and your sunan, and the shaitan won't be able to get to your wajibat and your faraid. If you take the shortcuts there, you're opening yourself up. You're not guarding your borders. You're allowing him to come right into your capital where everything is controlled from. And so Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu he says, and then, you know, for the men, and here we can take man to mean literally, but we can also take man to mean the men of Allah. And that includes the pious women as well. Because in the Sufi, the terminology of the Sufiya, a man, a true man, is someone who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is a man or a woman. So he says, al azimatu lil rijal He says that azima is for the men. Why? لِأَنَّهَا الْأَشَقُّ amur Because it's more difficult and bitter. It's hard. وَالْرُخْسَةُ لِلنِّسَاءِ sibyan And rukhsa, the easy path, that's for the women and the children. لِأَنَّهَا الْأَسْهَلْ Because that's the easy option. And then, there are many other beautiful things in the teachings of Sayyidina Ghawse Azam radiallahu ta'ala. But one more thing and then I'll uh, wrap up insha'Allah. So he says, in another one of his lectures, he says, Ya Ghulam, my son, Da' anka al-hawas, alladhi anta fihi wa alayhi. He says that you need to remove from yourself this greed that you have fallen into and which has overpowered you. وَاتَّبِعِ الْقَوْمَ فِي أَقْوَالِهِمْ وَأَفْعَالِهِمْ You need to follow the pious people, those people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ones that you aspire to be like, you need to follow them فِي أَقْوَالِهِمْ وَأَفْعَالِهِمْ In what they said and what they did. In other words, lip service alone is not enough. You need to follow the pious in what they said and what they did. So he's saying you have to walk the walk as well. You can't just talk the talk. Unfortunately, in the age that we live in now, this is very common. We live in the age of social media and filters and you know, we like to show everyone this really shiny, nice image. And what we do behind closed doors, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. So what he's saying is if you want to be amongst those righteous people, you need to walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Then he says, لا تطلب الوصول إلى ما وصلوا إليه مجرد الدعوة الكاذبة. Don't try to get to their rank with just a false testimony, with just a false claim, with false words, empty words. You're not going to get to that place with just empty words. اصبر على البلاء كما صبروا عليه. Be steadfast. And patient on your trials and tribulations like they were patient. So that you can also then reach the rank that they reached. And then he goes on and he says that when a person is not patient, he says that when you are impatient, and this is very important, it's a deep thing what he's saying here. He's saying when you are impatient, during your impatience, you have removed yourself from the slavehood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because a slave is always happy with the will of his master. 
If Allah puts you through a difficulty and you start moaning and complaining about it, in that moment you are not his slave. And then he says some very powerful words. Hadith Qudsi. He says, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي بَعْضِ كُتُبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in some of his revelation, مَنْ لَمْ يَرْضَ بِقَضَائِي وَلَمْ يَصْبِرْ عَلَى بَلَائِي فَلْيَتَّخِذْ إِلَاهًا سِوَايَا Whoever is not content with my will and whoever is not patient upon the tribulations and difficulties that I send, فَلْيَتَّخِذْ إِلَاهًا سِوَايَا Then he can go and find another God other than me. Allah. Subhanallah. Is that amazing, ajeeb statement? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and we know there is no other God because we believe with our hearts and souls, لا إله إلا الله. There is no other God. And Allah says, if you're not happy with my will, if you're not happy with what I have allocated to you in life, go find another God. Allahu Akbar. My dear brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many favors, we can't count them. He mentions this himself in the blessed Quran, that if you tried to count my favors, you wouldn't be able to. My time is coming to a close. I have two, three minutes. I want to sum up. You know, there are so many things we can talk about from the teachings of Sayyidina Allah Azam radiallahu But I want us to take this lesson of patience. One, because we see it played out in front of us. But what does it mean for us in our lives? How do we show that patience? The ulama will tell you there are different kinds of sabr. Holding back and refraining from sin is a type of sabr. Holding on to good actions and not falling into bad ones, this is a type of sabr. And not complaining is a type of sabr when you're in difficulty. So what can we do? People ask me, youngsters ask, what can we do in the current situation, what's going on? Well, first and foremost, each and every one of us can do a sincere dua for those people. This is something we can all do, right? Nobody is unable to make a sincere dua for those people. Number two, we can educate ourselves about the history of this conflict. Well, I call it conflict. Really, it's not a conflict. It's an oppression. We can educate ourselves in the history of this oppression. When we have that education, we will know and we will speak with confidence that the actions of the Zionist Israeli regime, they are illegal. And the Geneva Convention and all the other international humanitarian laws, they're all there. You can all go onto their website and have a look. Organizations like Amnesty International have a whole section on their website highlighting exactly which laws Israel is contravening. It also, the Geneva Convention also teaches us that the Palestinian people, who are an occupied people, have the legal right to resist and to defend themselves even with violence and force. The law allows them to do that. But what Israel is doing, the law does not allow them to do that. The point I'm making is that if we start going into this, we can analyze each and everything. But we need that knowledge. We should educate ourselves. This is our history. It's the history of the Ummah. One of the reasons why we are so lost as a community is because we haven't studied our history. We don't know our history. So if you are sincere, you want to help the Palestinian people, go and educate yourself. Learn your history. What's stopping you? If Sky and Netflix and these things are taking up your time and YouTube, then what right do you have to moan and complain? Really? And the other thing, we can take part in those people who are calling for the BDS movement, the Boycott, Divest and Sanctions movement. So if we are okay to use products made by companies who are funding Israel, we're okay with that. We're okay to use them and to sell them and it doesn't matter to us, then we have no right to say anything about that situation. It's, you know, we need to think. 
deeply. And I said to uh, some brothers asked me, local brothers of mine who um, own businesses, they run takeaways and stuff. So he asked me this question about protesting and uh, you know, the, the subject of boycotting came up. And I said that there are many people who have stood up, they've shown courage. Many local brands and takeaways and so on who have said we are not going to stock such and such brand anymore because it supports the genocide. I said, you know, and this brother, he said to me, oh, the mosques should be dictating this to people. But, you know, I said to him, the mosques and the, the council for mosques and these uh, organizations, they have a role to play. But you are in the field. You are a local businessman. What is stopping you from networking with other businesses on the same street? There's like 50 takeaways on this street. They're all Muslim owned. Why can't you network with each other and talk about this issue? Imagine, you know, the, the support that individual businesses have received from the public. And I know it's been received well. People talk about these things. Imagine that support, how much more it would be if there was 20 or 30 businesses all in on it together. And what an impact that would have. And it does have an impact. If somebody tries to tell you it doesn't have an impact, it's not true. These things have an impact. This is why we see there are, there are efforts to make boycotting illegal. Why are those efforts there? Because clearly it matters. It has an impact. And that's why those efforts are there. I'm not asking you to do anything illegal, by the way. Everything I'm suggesting is perfectly legal. And it is your legal right. It's your freedom to choose which company you give your money to. And this is your part of your struggle to choose. Educate yourselves. You can support those people who are doing good work. The charities that are working. Not just on the ground, but also the charities that are working to educate the people about the situation. Support them. And if the local community, there are businesses and individuals in the local community who step up and who stand up and be counted in this historical time, then support them. The protests and the marches and the assemblies, they all raise awareness if you have time and make time for them, take part in them as well. But the final thing is this, I'm going to finish with this. All of that is good and well. But I feel there is something more deep, something deeper at an individual level that we can all do. And my brothers, if we do not do this, then I fear we have only made a mockery of our Palestinian brothers and sisters. And that is this. We need to change our own state. Let's analyze our lives. See how we are living our lives. Are we living for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we living for the, next, for the next fix of social media? Are we living for the next fix of fast food? You know, look at our lives. Let's just analyze our lives. Talk is cheap. This is why Ghazi Azim radiallahu he said walk the walk as well. It's easy to talk. We can sit around all day and everyone has a lot to say. But let's look inside ourselves, each and every one of us. I feel that because our spirits are so high at the moment, we need to take that energy and do something positive with it. You know, if you have been avoiding certain brands in the last two, three weeks because you're horrified at the images that are coming out of Gaza, then be steadfast upon that. Be steadfast upon that and tell yourself, I am not going to use these products until a time when there is peace and those people are no longer oppressed. I know personally, I know people who have not, for the last 15, 20 years, they've not bought Coca-Cola. And their lives are perfectly fine. I know people who don't have Sky subscriptions. Their lives are perfectly fine. In fact, their lives are better off because they're not glued to the television all the time. My brothers, you know, really, I, sometimes I feel so, a sense of, um, I don't know what's the right word for it. I don't want to use the wrong word. But we talk and talk and talk. But let us use this moment for a real, long-lasting change. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy will be with us. Our life in this world is very temporary. Let's make every moment count. Let's make 
our space that we have occupied in this world count? And I'll finish with this verse. The poet, he says, Koi gul baaki rahega Na chaman reh jayega Par rasoolullah ka Deene hasan reh jayega The deen will remain. Whether we remain is all dependent on our relationship with the deen. Look at Rasi Azam He lived for the deen. A thousand years later, we're here talking about him. Is he alive or is he not alive? Of course he's alive. We're keeping him alive because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed it to be so. So live your life for the deen. Can you imagine if tomorrow we all changed our priorities and we turned away from the facade of this dunya? You know, and these multinational corporations, what interest do they have in the affairs of the people? What matters to them is what is profitable and what is not profitable. They don't have any moral compass. That moral compass has to come from us, the people, the people of faith and conscience. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the tawfiq to understand what the need of this time is. May Allah ta'ala allow us to change for the better and always strive constantly to better ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end the suffering of all the people who are suffering in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this gathering from us. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Koi gul baaki rahega Na chaman reh jayega Par rasoolullah ka Deene hasan reh jayega No blossom ever no garden will always remain But the beautiful way of our Prophet will always remain Hum safiro baag hai koi dam ka chahe chaha bul bule ud jayegi suna chaman reh jayega bul bule ud jayegi suna chaman reh Laughter with friends and moments Chirping in the garden of life Nightingales will fly away Silent the garden will remain and this next verse, it's alluding to our, you know, physical, our, our concentration on the outer as opposed to the inner. We're focused in this time especially on our outer. And the poet, he says, Atlaso kam khab ki poshak par naza ho tum Isi tani be jaan par Khaki kafan reh jayega Isi tani be jaan par Khaki kafan reh jayega In your silken dresses and fine robes you take such pride and joy 
Yet on this lifeless form only A shroud of earth will remain Nami shahani jahan Mit jai ge le kin Hashir tak namo nishani Panj tan reh Kings of this world will become Forgotten and nameless in time But until the end of time the Prophet's loved ones will remain. Sab fana ho jayenge kafi wa lekin hashir tak naate hazrat ka zabano par sukhan reh jayega. All will perish, O oh, coffee, but right up until judgment day, sweet melodies of prophetic praise on our tongues will remain. For those of you who don't know, this kalam is the kalam of Molana Kafi Shaheed, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, who was a freedom fighter in the struggle against the uh, Indian occupation, uh, uh, meaning that the, when the British occupied and controlled the Indian territory, he was amongst those people who fought for freedom. And it is mentioned that he was sentenced to death. And as he was walking towards the noose to be hung, he was reading this kalam at that time. My dear brothers, we have a beautiful tradition. We are not some orphan nation that has no history and no heritage. We have a history. We have a heritage. We have a master who is very much alive. All that is required is for us to make a small effort, to make a small change. Let us use this opportunity to you know, make that promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will make that change. In the battle of Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angels to help the believers and the poet he says fizai badr paida kar farishte teri nusrat ko utar sakte hain gardon se qatar andar qatar ab bhi if we can make this our priority that we're going to make sure we are steadfast on our deen we're not going to miss our prayers. That morning time when we you know, are trying to get up for Fajr and we're being held back by our nafs and the shaitan, we're going to fight that. We're going to be steadfast in our deen. Let us all make that effort within ourselves and then see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns things for us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives me if I have said anything um, in error. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us all and bless the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wa alhamdulillah.